In 1849, a tragic fire burned down Plymouth Church located on Cranberry Street. Shortly after, it was rebuilt on Orange Street in Brooklyn, New York in the year of 1850. This building is a fine example of 19th century urban tabernacle architecture with Italianate and colonial motives, said Joseph Williams, who was the architect that designed the new Plymouth Church. The church itself is very simple but beautiful. The red brick faced building is not overly decorated or elaborate in any way. In fact, the brick is very plain. If you take a closer look at the four Greek Doric columns located before the church's entrance, you will notice that these columns are painted a very basic white color and serve no real purpose than for practicality. Behind the columns, you will notice three wooden doorways. Stop and think for a moment. Can you think of any practical or historical reasons for this design? According to history, during the Gothic time period, three doorways became common in the building of large cathedrals that were designed to fit thousands of people. This design was for the convenience of the congregation entering and exiting the building safely and was proven efficient for Plymouth Church. Henry Beecher would often fill the church with up to 3,000 people in a single service. Can you imagine 3,000 people flooding those doorways? Since then, however, fire laws have reduced its legal capacity to 1,400. As you take a step inside of the church, you will immediately find a Cooper plaque of Henry Ward Beecher. Looking to your right and then to your left, you will notice two beautiful red carpeted staircases that lead to the upper tiers of the church. Carefully make your way up one staircase. Can you think? of any other places where you've seen similar seating arrangements? You might find this kind of similar to that of Madison Square Garden or Yankee Stadium. If you've thought either of these, you are correct. This theater-like style was very important as well as practical for Henry Beecher's sermons because it allowed everyone to see and hear him while he spoke. Its spaciousness made it possible to seat 3,000 people who were eager to hear his sermons. The pulpit where Henry Ward Beecher delivered his sermons is very wide and allowed him to walk comfortably as he preached. Also located on the pulpit is his chair dressed in red velvet. Do you notice any particular design of the chair? The design is most similar to the way king's thrones were made in medieval times. It has two golden olive branches surrounding the chair and it's some of the only ornamentation located in the entire church. Let's take a closer look at the church's pews. Do you find anything different about them, or perhaps missing? Have you thought of anything? The pews curve completely around the stage with no center aisle. This particular design was insisted upon by Henry Ward Beecher himself. This theater style became extremely popular in Midwestern churches. The church had also been much more luminous before stained glass windows had been designed by Frederick Steinmetz lamb and installed during the year of 1907. You might have noticed that there are no ordinary stained glass windows for a church. They actually contain historical figures rather than religious theme or character. How about a short history lesson? As you can see, Plymouth Church holds a lot of historical significance. Did you know that this church was part of the Underground Railroad? The actual church itself, as well as both parishioners' homes was used to harbor runaway slaves who were on their way to Canada. Henry Ward Beecher was a passionate anti-slave activist and preached in Plymouth Church for 40 years. Throughout these years, his efforts saved the lives of countless slaves. Did you also know that Abraham Lincoln worshipped in this church twice? The church itself may be architecturally plain. However, the history that took place within it is very rich. The simplicity of its design was actually quite inviting to the diverse Brooklyn community in earlier times. As you exit the church, you will notice that adjacent to the building is a sculpture of Henry Ward Beecher, made by Gutzen Borglum in 1914. If you think the name Borglum sounds familiar, it probably does. Gutzen Borglum is well known for his design of Mount Rushmore. The bronze sculpture of Beecher has been restored several times and was placed on the lawn in front of the church due to Borglum's association with the original architect 
of the educational house connected to the church. Beecher's hand is extended outward, placing emphasis on the fact that he was willing to lend a helping hand to African Americans who were victims of slavery. He has been quoted as saying that he would treat all fleeing slaves as his own flesh and blood. There are two young girls at the base of the sculpture pleading for help with extended arms toward Beecher. The girls are believed to be the Edmund sisters. They were two young slave girls which Beecher held mock auctions for in order to set them free. His reputation grew due to his mock slave auctions. Beecher often spoke for hours to his congregation inspiring them to purchase freedom. This was a very clever tactic to involve the people to participate in the fight to set slaves free. Some may say that despite Beecher's hard work toward the abolition of slavery, the sculpture's design shows his dominance in respect to the two girls. Although he deeply cared for them, he is not depicted as equal but as superior. Another interesting thing about this sculpture is its juxtaposition with the best relief of Lincoln beside him. In actuality, the inclusion of Lincoln sitting down made him seem smaller compared to Beecher, implying that Beecher may have been a more important figure in the abolition of slavery than Lincoln was. Also take notice of what surrounds the sculpture. There are slightly larger stone door columns that run parallel to Beecher and the Greek pediment located on the top. This detail is similar to Greek temples that hold sculptures of mythical gods. The overall design of the sculpture was made for the purpose of exalting Beecher in a way that he would be considered a celebrity or a famous public figure. After learning all of this great information, it is time to come to an end. I hope you have enjoyed your tour of Plymouth Church and have learned some important things about its history. Please feel free to make your own observations about its architecture and dive further into the church's rich history during your free time.